magic is real. Magic is very real. And we as Christians absolutely believe in the real existence of magic. And I would argue that you really can't see what's happening around the world right now if you don't see that there's a spiritual element behind everything going on and that these really are magic spells. The father of lies using the media, social media, propaganda to put spells over our noetic faculties and that we become foot soldiers for them. There is some confusion as to what magic actually is. I think that this can be cleared up if you just look at the very earliest descriptions of magic. Magic in its earliest form is often referred to as the art. I believe that this is completely literal. I believe that magic is art and that art, whether that be writing, music, sculpture or any other form, is literally magic. And I thought, how much could you affect reality? by writing a comic that mimicked reality but pushed it in weird directions. So around about 1997 I decided I would really seriously turn the thing into a super sigil. And I was based on the idea of, uh, if you look at cave art, the first art was done, the first writing was done basically as art. And if someone wanted to make something happen, like if you were in the, if you were some like fucked up caveman in a cave somewhere moaning about the, your dinner, what do you do? You draw a bison on the wall, stick some spears in it, go out, and the bison dies filled with spears. And it's, hey, man! <laughs> Art is, like magic, the science of manipulating symbols, words or images, to achieve changes in consciousness. The very language of magic seems to be talking as much about writing or art as it is about supernatural events. A grimoire, for example, the Book of Spells, is simply a fancy way of saying grammar. Indeed, to cast a spell is simply to spell, to manipulate words, to change people's consciousness. And I believe that this is why an artist or writer is the closest thing in the contemporary world that you are likely to see to a shaman. So these things happen. Magic works. And when I started doing the comic, I found that you could actually make magic happen by writing things and changing the operating system of the universe. It works. Magic, from this perspective, is not so much um, a single ritual, but about using ritualistic techniques to create art and mediums that then influence the mental landscape of other people. The late 19th and early 20th centuries represent one of the most tectonic theoretical and practical shifts in magic. Here, magical theory and practice formally intersected with the emerging world of psychology and psychoanalysis, along with philosophical developments around the concept of the will. And so due to psychoanalysis and anthropology and Marxism and various other shocks, we got to the point where we could look at science and say science is the product of people people are doing this and their prejudices are getting into it and it's not just enough to say I will be objective you've got to learn to change yourself from the inside out before you can even begin to approximate toward objectivity right we've talked about logos theology we believe that God spoke the world into existence this is why Christianity we don't deny the existence of magic it's that we deny that the, uh, we should be manipulating the higher faculties of ourselves in which we're made in the image of God, the ability to participate in language for truthful communication, uh, community building, and communion with each other and God. They use and manipulate language for the purpose of power acquisition, worldly desires, the manipulation of other people. Number one, first thing you do, write down a desire, make it something easy that is likely to happen, something possible, rather than say, you know, I'm going to be king of the moon, which, <laughs> which you may want to be, as we all do, but <laughs> it's kind of hard to be king of the moon, you're going to have to get a rocket and go up there. So pick something easy. If you want to sigilize for a lottery win, make sure you buy a ticket or else it won't work. So these are the conditions within the material universe that we live in. One of the things we're actually dealing with is some, as I say, some kind of operating system that can be hacked using words. And words seem to be the binding agent for this thing, whatever it is. The first is the condensation of one's will into a sigil. 
Here, Spar simply writes out his will in Roman letters. He gives the example of, quote, this is my wish to obtain the strength of a tiger. And he compresses the letters and words atop each other to eventually form a single glyph or sigil, which should be easily visualized. Now, with the sigil, one begins the process of implanting this sigil seed of pure will into the subconscious. I did, uh, I had an experience before I became Christian, did sigil magic, and it is real. You, you, there's a way in which you can manipulate the world through the manipulation of language and desires, but it is negative for you and your spiritual growth. Do not do any of this stuff. I just want to show you that it is real. And the people that are doing writing comic books and m music and art, they are infusing their art with magic. And unless you're aware of it, you're not going to be able to defend yourself against it. Primarily by focusing one's psychic energy into a highly compressed symbol or sigil, which when planted into the subconscious, serves to open a kind of magical back door by which one can access the power of Kia for the Magus. We can make this happen. Slowly those things become letters, they become words, they become reduced to abstractions, complexes of meaning. And you can take that basic idea, and as we've seen, people like Austin Osmond Spear, the magician from the early part of the century, or Crowley, or the chaos magicians from the 80s, who were a big inspiration on me, they use this stuff, and what you can do is this, like I say, try this at home, write in a desire, quite simple, say it is my desire that uh, you know, my cat wins the Olympics. <laughs> Take out all the vowels, right? <laughs> write this down for fuck's sake and do it, don't just listen, do it, right? Take out the vowels and you'll be left with a string of consonants. Take out the repeated consonants and you'll be left with a string of consonants that have no repeats in it, you know, whatever, X, Y, A. D, whatever. Turn that thing into a little image. Take the D, draw a big D, and then you've got a T, draw a T under it, and keep reducing it down until it looks magical. And there are no rules for this thing. Do it until it looks magical. At that point, you now have a sigil. The sigil will work. You can project desire into reality and change reality. It works. <laughs> <coughs> With these forms of chaos magic and magic in general, it's all about the establishment of your will onto reality to attain something. At the moment, the people who are using shamanism and magic to shape our culture are advertisers. Rather than trying to wipe people up, their shamanism is used as an opiate to tranquilize people, to make people more manipulable their magic box of television and by their magic words, their jingles can cause everybody in the country to be thinking the same words and have the same banal thoughts all at exactly the same moment. And why has it been made occult? Because Coca-Cola have got the secret. These people know what we're talking about here because what you do is you create a sigil. Coca-Cola is a sigil. The McDonald's M is a sigil. These people are basically turning the world into themselves using sigils. Occultism is hidden by the basis of its spiritual belief that it's secret knowledge. It's not supposed to be public. It's incorporating elements of Western occultism with ontologies, actually more typical in Hindu and Taoist thought. More on this in just a second. Of course, axemic signs of power or sigils have been known in Western magic for millennia. In fact, I've covered some of their history in another episode. You can check that out in the card above. These symbols were typically thought to interact with reality through a series of occult sympathies, which, when employed correctly, could compel reality or even the gods to behave in accordance to the will of the ritual practitioner or magician. Spiritualism was the natural state of human thinking up until the Renaissance and the subsequent Age of Reason that grew out of it. Um, our original way of seeing the world was as a place entirely inhabited by spirits, where everything had its indwelling essence, where everything was in some sense sacred, including ourselves. The Age of Reason changed all that. 
while it's inarguable that reason brought many great benefits and was a very necessary stage of our development, unfortunately this led to materialism where the physical material world was seen as the be all and end all of existence where inevitably we were seen as creatures that had no spiritual dimension that had no souls living in a soulless universe of dead matter when we're talking about magic we're not talking about some fantasy we're talking about a reality if we christians are christians we know that magic is real and scripture itself has multiple passages um saying that it's real and something that we should not be a part of. Beyond that, I find that we've been deluding ourselves in the worst way of all by believing in the individual. In magic, these are seen as indistinguishable. That every human soul is in fact one human soul. It is the soul of the universe itself. And as long as you are doing the will of the universe, then it is impossible to do anything wrong. So stop being distinct. Stop being autonomous people. This is, again, what we've talked about with the NPC, that the person who actually buys into the narrative, the person that actually believes the worldview that Grant Morrison puts forth, gender dysphoria, uh, believing that he's a woman, sigil magic, sexual promiscuity, those people in turn losing the image of God in them all became the same person. When you see the person with the purple hair, the blue hair, the nose piercings, the same tattoos, the same cultural markers, all that showing is, oh, I'm, I'm progressive. I'm a modern person. No, you actually lack individuality. The whole counterculture and being trans and, and, and being punk, all these people are the exact same. They've actually lost the authenticity of being a unique person and the quest for self-expression and unique identity in turn, just buying into the official narrative. Again, they themselves are under the magic spell. The people that he's trying to convince of losing your individuality, losing your distinctiveness, this is all an illusion. No, the people that are actually doing that are the NPCs. <laughs> They're actually the people that are in lockstep with the entire narrative and globalist agenda.